So this is session three of being a church in a pagan culture. And today we're going to look at Pergamum. And this is a city that was near the ancient city of Troy. And it was a big city and it had been made the capital of Roman Asia Minor. John describes it though as a place where Satan lives. Now those are pretty strong words. He was, he commended the people. Um, he said, you've been faithful even when one of your number was put to death, we presume for his faith. But Pergamum was full of things that were contrary to God. First of all, there was an enormous temple to the god Dionysius. Now they believed that Dionysius was the son of Zeus, the god, of, the father of all gods, and a woman, and that Dionysius promised them life after death. Now that would have been pretty galling to Christians at the time because Jesus is the only one who is the son of God and of a woman. And having life after death, well, that's what Jesus offers us. Also, the way that they would um, become a part of Dionysius was to get themselves drunk until they got into a complete stupor. So it really was very galling for the Christians there. A second thing is that this was known as a place of healing and it was for all the known world uh, would come to this place for Asclepios, who was the god of healing. Not sure if that's a pronunciation is absolutely correct. But people seeking healing would come here and they'd be examined by the priests and if they had a terminal condition, the priest would have said no. If they were pregnant, the priest said no. But if they were accepted, and what they would do was they'd walk down this long tunnel which had water running on either side of it into a big chamber and a big round chamber. The running water was in there too. So it sort of had this sort of calming sense. When they were down there, they were given a drug and the drug put them to sleep. And hopefully in their sleep, they would have a dream. Asclepius would give them a dream. And when they woke, they'd tell the priest what the dream was. And the priest would then interpret that dream as to what their healing should be, whether it's probably mostly diet or exercise or maybe some sort of basic herbal medicine. This again would have been anathema to Christians who knew that Jesus was the one who brings healing, God is the one who brings healing, and he never turns anyone away. Then another one was a shrine to the god Demeter, and she was known as the god of groceries, the god who put food on their table. And so they would worship her and one of the um, rituals was that they would be washed in bull's blood and it was said to take away their sin. And you can see how galling that would be to Christians. But they would worship her because she put groceries on the table. Now John knew that Jesus had fed 5,000 people. So he knew that God was the one who gave the food. Then there was the cult of emperor worship. And when Julius Caesar died, uh, a bright comet was seen in the sky. And so people said, ah, oh, that was him ascending to be one of the gods. And so from then on, Augustus, who followed Julius Caesar, said he was the son of God. And the emperors all after that called themselves son of God. And in this area, Trajan was then the emperor and he had a big temple built to himself. And it said he was their God and their king. So, so many things there which were absolute counterfeits of God. And so that's where um, John is saying this is the place where Satan lives, all this counterfeit stuff going on. He did have one reprimand for the people. Yes, they'd been faithful, but they were allowing amongst them um, someone who was encouraging people to live ungodly lives especially with immorality. But this was a culture that was looking for meaning and purpose, but they were looking everywhere but in God. It does sound a bit familiar, I think, because everyone's looking for purpose and meaning in life. 
And so we need to be able to show them that they can find that purpose and meaning in God. This is a path.